guys welcome back to my channel i'm super excited about this episode because i'm going to be introducing something new later on in the video so make sure you watch through the whole video and like and subscribe and share and you'll get to see the bonus activity that i'm going to be doing in this video so i'm going to be playing two or one 10 minute games just it depends if it takes too long then i'll just do one and i'll play two if it's pretty short so Anyway, let's get into the video. Okay, I'm going to challenge him. Oh, this guy named Mifka. I'm playing him. I'm going to do my standard King's Pawn opening. And he replied with the Queen's Gambit, I believe. That's an opening that I don't play that often. Queen's Gambit can be very destructive, and it's also a difficult position to play. Because he has to develop all of his pieces on the Queen's side, pretty much. Um, he's going to try to push this pawn all the way forward, but I'm going to stop that by moving my pawn up, which also creates a do creates an opening so that I can develop my other pieces. Um, I'm going to develop my knight because, well, why not, <laughs> right? It's just a developing an extra piece. And also my knight is very powerful. It has so many squares it can go. Knights in the center or close to the center are extremely powerful. So you have to watch out and also take advantage of the center squares. So I'm going to push my pawn forward, which strengthens this second pawn that was kind of hanging and weak. And also opens up a file for my bishop to go along, which is pretty good. He pushed my, he pushed the pawn. I am... Not going to take and I'm going to continue my development because either direction he takes, I can just take back. So there's no point in actually taking because he's just losing in development if he does take. It just wastes him a move. But of course I'm going to have to take back, but technically I still got an extra piece developed. So right now he's thinking about the move, and he did do a good move. He pushed the pawn, which forces my knight in the golden position that I loved into... Oh, actually, I could, could move my knight here. It has the potential threat of forking the king and the rook. And I also have the potential threat of moving my bishop there. So that's pretty good for me. I don't know what he can do about it. He gave me a check. Um, I'm going to... Hmm. I'll just block with the queen. No. Um. I'm pretty sure the best move in this situation is just to move. I know it seems bad, but then I can still fork him, and I don't know what he can do about it. I'm pretty sure I'm just going to move up. I mean, there's nothing he can do about the fork. If I block with the queen, he can take. Then I'm pretty much forced to take with the bishop. If I take with the queen, my king's completely open, and he can just move his king. And it won't be a fork anymore. But now that I moved my king, he has his queen right there out in the open. And I still have the potential threat of forking. So that's the power of knights and the beauty of knights. I'm going to um, attack, well, I'll fork. Why not win the extra material while I still can? Just gonna take. I'm gonna offer a queen trade because with his queen still there, my knight can't get out. There's like no possible way and then he'd just be, just be up a point if he gets my knight. And knights are my favorite piece and they're very valuable. He resigned? Oh, well, that was quick. Let's hop on to a next game. He just resigned it. Maybe I'll rematch him and he might accept. 
If he doesn't, I'll just play another one. That was a good game. I can't believe he resigned. He could have trapped my knight and got up a point. Right? Like, because if he... I'm up two, and if he takes my knight somehow, my knight can't move. If he takes my knight somehow, then he will just get up a point. That wouldn't be bad for me because I have an extra rook versus two bish I mean, two knights in the end game isn't too bad. He did not accept my game, so I'm just going to create another challenge. Random person. Again, if you're watching this video, you can challenge me, especially when I'm playing in the live stream. I'm going to be doing a live stream soon. So if you're paying attention to my channel and you're watching the live stream, you can challenge me and I might accept you in the live stream if I see it. But yeah, I'll just I'll accept it if the challenge comes up and you can actually look at my live stream to see if the challenge came up and I accepted it if you're not if it's not coming up for you, okay? I'm going to play another person since that game was really quick. Whoa, that accepted really fast. So, this guy named Nerman 2 did the knight's opening. My defense for the knight's opening is the queen's pawn opening, then the double knight defense for the queen's side, and he responded with the queen's side opening. I'm just going to, if he does that, like he, which he did, I'm going to push, well, actually I'm going to develop my bishop here, and take his knight. His knight is really powerful, why not? I actually might copy him. It seems like a good situation to castle that way. Yeah, I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy him, develop my knight. I actually, I'm going to see what he does, and I actually might castle queen side. I know it seems silly because I already set everything up, but... Actually, I'm going to castle king side because he has these two glorious bishops. I need to get the knock those off the board because he can be very destructive with them. I'm going to move... Hmm. I'll move here. I know that seems weird, but if he takes with his bishop, I'll gladly take back because then it gets his bishop off this diagonal once I move the pawn. Like, he has this really wondrous diagonal with both of his bishops. But if I... If he doesn't take, I'm attacking his second bishop. And I have a pretty good square for my knight, so... It all depends on what he moves. Remember, keep watching to the end, and I'll be doing a bonus section. I'm not going to tell you what's going to be in it, but you can look forward to it. From now on, in every one of my videos, I'm going to try to add a bonus section to all of them. And hopefully they'll make your day a bit brighter. I'm going to push my pawn up. To kick his bishop out, I really cannot stand his bishop right there. Yeah, he just moved out of the way. Now his bishop's kind of trapped and it doesn't have the best diagonal. I'm going to castle queen side because it seems safer. Mm hmm. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. I'm going to push. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't mean to do that. I just hung a knight if he sees it. I was thinking about pushing and then pushing again to threaten his bishop, but I left a knight hanging with that move. Oh, he didn't see it. If he saw that, that would have been nasty. It would have, like, put all this on diagonal. I'm going to push again. Now his bishop is almost trapped. His only options are to move there, which he did, or all the way back, which would have been disgusting for him. I'm going to move my rook there because I'm going to try to start an attack on his king. 
because all my pieces are towards his king side. Whoa! I did not even pay attention to this side of the board where my king is. I'm going to push this pawn to stop his pawn parade because he's trying to storm the board. If he had gone one pawn push further, he would have just destroyed my pawn position. That was a really good play. I'm glad I got that because I would have been crushed if I didn't. I'm, oh, I don't like this move. I'm gonna move, hmm. I'm gonna move back because then I have an escape route for my queen. Oh, that is disgusting. He's aiming here. Um, I don't know how I'm gonna escape this. Um, hmm, I think my only option here, which is very annoying, is to take this pawn because it temporarily stops mate here. In this pawn and he takes back which is the best move actually what I can do is I can fork oh no 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 oh wait okay okay I was thinking that he could just take the pawn and then mate me down here but I have the option to take his knight this is getting really scary it's really really dangerous for me I'm going to have to take. There's no other option. I'm pretty much dead. If he makes the right moves, I can somehow escape. Might be able to escape this. Mm. Actually, I think I'm safe. If he checks with his queen, I can either push the pawn or I can just move, which I'm, I can escape to this. I can escape behind the, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't, oh no, that's mate? I did not see that. That was really good, Nerman. If that's how you pronounce your name, Nuriman 2. That was an excellent game. Very interesting. You played really well. You did really good in the opening. And I am totally missed that mate. Now for the bonus section. I know this is the thing that you all have been waiting for. In the bonus sections, I'm going to be sharing one of my skills with you. And today, I'm going to be showing you a magic trick. For this magic trick, I'm going to stand up. For this magic trick involves the card, the Nine of Hearts. Watch the Nine of Hearts as it visually changes into the Nine of Clubs. Cool, right? If you want to see more magic tricks and cool flourishes and stuff like that, check out my next video where I'll be doing more magic tricks like this. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.